now discussing are the reforms in Ukraine fast enough? Is it enough? Um, so what is your assessment and what are the what would be the signs for everybody that things are moving and what are the key things without which things won't be considered as done? I think uh, uh, very important reforms uh, have been going on and I really want to congratulate the Ukrainian authorities uh, for its commitment. I think this government is certainly the government who has made more reforms in Ukrainian history. Uh, having said that, I think that particularly on the fight against corruption more has to be done. I know that the overall perception of the Ukrainian people is that uh, things are not happening there. Uh, it's not completely true. The government uh, indeed made some changes in systemic matters that were important and they are going to limit the possibilities of, of, of corruption in the future. For instance, some reforms in the energy sector. That was good. But I think the work will not be complete before there are some concrete results. For instance, people that are committing crimes of corruption that we see them subject to trial. And if the, the, the evidence is confirmed, to prison. Uh, uh, there is an overall sentiment uh, in the Ukraine of impunity, that you can do these things and afterwards you, you, you become very rich and uh, uh, things go uh, as far as, as well as possible for them. No, that's why it is important to put in place and to make it work the authority against corruption. That's why it's important to make the reform of judiciary, to make also the uh, more effective attorney general system. Uh, and it's particularly important the tax administration reform, tax and customs. It's critically important to have a credible independent tax administration because that's the best way to fight the shadow economy uh, and also for the people to understand, no, everybody pays its fair part or share of taxes. Uh, I know the government is committed to do that. People in the government, they recognize when you speak with them that there are some resistance, uh, but uh, I think that's the crunch point for, for Ukraine. And now we have that historic moment that it is the adoption and now the entry into force of the DCFTA, the Deep and Comprehensive Free Trade Area with the European Union. So this is not only about economy, it's an opportunity for the Ukrainian society to make that reform, to be fully integrated economically with the European Union. And I think that's possible to happen. So this year is critically important to see if uh, the progress that was achieved so far can be continued. Uh, and I believe more can be done in the fight against corruption. Uh, and in the current situation uh, in European Union, with a growing populism, especially due in the time of the uh, refugee crisis, we're speaking about Europe being less united, different European governments, and which makes it much harder. And with you know right uh, right parties uh, coming to this thing, uh, those who are against any kind of. European enlargement. So, in this regards, um, how you see and what could be done, and what I within this keeping the unity, especially in case of you Ukraine. Know, when I was president of the Commission, I was listening to commentators predicting the implosion of the euro, Brexit, Greece leaving the euro. I, I was listening to everybody predicting the end of the European Union. Okay, and it did not happen. We have shown the resilience of the European Union. I believe the European Union is strong enough to resist to these difficulties. Yes, it is true, it's a, a big challenge, the refugee crisis and the illegal migration crisis, because this is putting pressure on our systems and we have parties that are very much against foreigners. And so it's more difficult now to discuss the issue of freedom of movement in Europe than it was before. I hope that the European Union is going to keep its commitment towards visa liberalization for Ukraine. I already said it, if the European Union wants to show uh, uh, strongly that Ukraine is part of the European family, that's the best way to do it. And uh, in fact, um, this could be a very concrete demonstration of solidarity that does not cost so much money. Um, but I'm worried, I have to tell you, I don't believe the European Union is going to collapse. I hope the European Union, I'm sure the European Union will overcome these difficulties, but I'm worried about the uh, internal political development in some of our countries. 
where we are seeing more extremists and also xenophobic forces coming up. But we have to have patience and we have to be determined over time. What we hear also is that after some time there is a willingness of the European business and the governments to take away, to lift the sanctions against Russia because how it, you know people want to uh, be back to the business as usual. What is your feeling and what is your knowledge about Is this mood there? I think it's important um, that the European Union keeps its commitments towards Ukraine. Uh, of course, we would like, I also would like to see normal relations with Russia. But normal relations not at any price. For instance, the respect of the Minsk agreement is critically important. So, what is important now for the European Union, and I said it just today in this conference, and also I've been saying it to my colleagues in the European Union because I keep very close contacts with them, is not to give a lower priority to Ukraine. Because of the refugee crisis, because of the, the eyes of the European Union now are more turned to Syria, to the international terrorism, there is a risk that the Ukrainian issue goes down in the agenda of Europe. And that will be a mistake. Not only it will be bad for the Ukrainian people, but it will be bad also for Europe, because the Ukraine's stability is of the overall strategic interest for Europe. If Europe uh, does not respect the commitments taken with Ukraine, in that case, we may have other pr Ukraines in other parts of Europe. And that's why I, I'm so, so clear about this. Um, and uh, there is, of course, a debate going on in Europe on, on that. Uh, and that's also why it's important that Ukraine makes the reforms, you see. Because if not, uh, if, uh, if Ukraine does not appear attractive to the European uh, community, European business and so on, they will say, okay, Ukraine is a lost case, let's work with Russia. And I think, of course, it will be great if we can have normal relations with Russia, but not forgetting our commitments to Ukraine. And I know uh, Ukraine is still on the agenda, but we have a huge crisis currently ongoing in Moldova. Mm -hmm. And what do you think the European Union can do and how it can handle? You know, I'm it's a smaller country, but... I'm going to Moldova next week, uh, so I, I would prefer to answer your question afterwards. I know but what are your concerns now? I'm concerned, of course. We saw what happened recently uh, in terms even of violence and so on. We are concerned. Uh, but I also believe it's in our interest as European Union to, um, to support Moldova. But to be more specific, I would prefer to, to go there, to speak with people there, to understand better what's going on.